There are hundreds of AI tools that are better than ChatGPT, especially if you are a researcher, a PhD student, or someone who's just looking for something different that you can use ethically to find literature, to understand literature, to write research papers, and to just be a better researcher overall. I have tested tons and tons of them over the past two to three years. And in today's video, I'm going to be going through the top seven AI tools that you need to be using if you are a PhD student or researcher. The first is LitMaps. LitMaps is one that I have played around with quite a bit in the past. And again, I have, I'm pretty sure, shared with you here on YouTube. Now, LitMaps is a platform that is something that you'd use when you're really trying to find literature, especially in the early days of your PhD, and you want to try to find some literature and try to identify good research papers for your topic that you should read. This is a good tool to use. So you can input your uh, research question or your topic, and you'll get a list of research papers that can be connected in some way and it presents it to you in this connected format and i really like the user friendliness of it i think it's a really cool tool to look at and to use and it provides you with a good background and a good foundation for research papers that you should be reading you can also like label them tag them add them to certain folders which i find not many tools do very well so it's quite nice that you can do this with lit maps and even over time if there are new related articles that haven't you haven't read before or are not as part of your graph lit maps will say to you if there is something new that you haven't read yet or that you could add to your graph and it does add it into your graph so it's really able to be tailored quite quite a lot it just looks good and i think you can even add this into a method or into figure that you're using in your research paper the second is consensus and again, I've mentioned consensus quite a lot in the past. It's a really good AI search engines. So if you're a PhD student and you're just starting off in the lab and you want to find research papers that are relevant to you, or you want a good overall answer for your research question based on the papers available today, this would be a good tool. So let's say, for example, your research question is something to do with blue light and autophagy. You can ask a question like, uh, does blue light impact uh, autophagy across cell types? And it will say yes or no, or it will say yes a little bit, no a little bit, and maybe a little bit, because some papers are not, uh, don't have kind of definitive, um, a definitive answer. And I think this is good because it just means that when you're starting to read, you understand what the research is saying. You already know what the answer to your research question could be. And I definitely think that it's a lovely way of getting a quick snapshot of your research. Um, and uh, yeah, I do quite like consensus for that initial finding literature step as well. The third is SciSpace. So now that you've found your literature, you can go into SciSpace again to create like a bit of a literature library or a bit of a like graph or a bit of a column. SciSpace creates a table of literature for you that you can export and that gives you columns that include different things and characteristics about that research paper. So for example, you can have a column that's about the methods or you can have a column about the results or the limitations about the paper. And then you can go ahead and ask questions about each paper on SciSpace itself. So I find that it's a bit of a all-in-one tool. So you can ask questions and then you can find papers, add it to your library, cite it, but then also ask questions about that PDF. So if you don't know, if you want to find a summary of that PDF, or if you want to ask a specific question about that PDF, you can do in SciSpace. Next one is Anara. It used to be called Unriddle, and as I mentioned, it's a great tool for trying to understand research papers. I just love how user-friendly it is. You have the research paper on one panel, you can then ask questions in the middle panel in the chat, and then you can then look at your annotations and any labels that you have made in the last panel. And this is a brand new feature that they've just released not too long ago, I think last month or so. Or you can get rid of each of the panels and you can just have one large panel or two half panels in the the page it's a great tool for understanding your research papers and being able to quickly find information about the research paper within the research paper without hallucinations or anything of the matter the next one is notebook lm 
This one is Notebook LM. I've started to play around with Notebook quite a bit over the last couple of months. I didn't draw to it initially, but now I really, really enjoy using it. It's a great way of discovering sources, but also uploading your own sources. So in this case, I've just used some random sources for the purpose of this video. But I've selected these sources. There's 10 sources here. I've imported them. You could do the same for your sources. It could be a video. It could be a PDF. It could be a YouTube video or a page or a website, whatever it is. Is. but the premise is that you have sources and you then ask questions or interrogate these sources so what i've done here is i've created a mind map and you can get a mind map of what the understanding and the research area and how it joins up together you can get like a really nice mind map for that you can also get a deep dive conversation where there are two hosts and they speak about the all of the sources that you've added as a conversation or you can just ask general questions about the sources i just think it's a really good tool as a phd student if you have got loads of sources and you want to get information about a bunch of them this would be really useful then julius ai it's one of the only AI data analysis tools out there and you can do a few things with the data here. So you can visualize your data, you can clean it up, you can do different tests like ANOVA, T-tests, any stat there. You can do any statistical tests here. You can also create graphs and I will show you something that I've done in the past. So here I have some data that I have created uh, tables for, I've made graphs for and I've just been able to generate lots of visual kind of understanding and visual processes through this data and i just think i just think it's really cool it makes the whole process a lot quicker and speeds it up and provides you with a platform that you can very easily do this so i want to recommend jenny i've spoken about jenny ai so many times in this platform jenny is an ai writing tool with this what you can do is very easily write and cite and find research papers link it to your library and hopefully kind of bring everything together when it comes to the writing aspect of research so here i've added a citation very easily i can change citation using the settings i can then highlight text i can chat to text and ask questions about certain parts of the text i can also do an ai edit so i can for example improve the writing the fluency paraphrase it simplify it make it longer translate it i can also just change the citation style and also do things like autocomplete and i think it's just a nice full rounder that helps you with writing and last but not least you have paper pal I've used PaperPal so much before, so it's just nice to be able to bring it to you in this roundup. So PaperPal is, again, an AI writing tool that helps you with improving and enhancing your productivity when it comes to AI, when it comes to academic writing. And here I've got a bit of text I've written. And what you can do is there's a few different kind of functionalities. So firstly, you can obviously do a spell check and you can get everything checked in terms of like your language and fluency. But then you can also do other things like paraphrasing, making academic, simplifying, trim, change the tone, uh, synonyms and things like that. I can then also ask questions and try to do a bit of research and citing and writing at the same time. So if I have a question, I can ask PaperPal and it will give me an answer, but it will also give me research papers to do with that particular answer. So I don't have to go onto Google Scholar or go onto another tool to find research papers, I can just find something quickly there. You can also, there's also templates, templates for writing the title, like getting summaries, emails, and, and things like that. And then this is what I really like. There's an AI review in the checks. I can ask a question like, how can I strengthen my introduction? How can I improve my conclusion? How can I be more critical? And it gives me a full breakdown of how I can do that. And then last but not least, it has a chat PDF function, which again is relatively new. And I can upload any PDF and ask any question about the PDF. So all of these tools that I've mentioned today, the capabilities are growing every single day. Every time I go onto them to test them out, I'm like, oh, this is a new feature. This is, this is really cool. And it's growing so much every day, but these are the seven tools that I would recommend if you're a beginner and you're thinking about using AI for the first time. If you have any questions about any of them or you want me to give you a tutorial about any of the ones I've mentioned, then please let me know. And if not, then I'll see you in the next video. Bye.